Let us all together prepare our hearts and come before the Lord with a pure and humble heart.
Good day, church. In this world, we will experience hardships, trials, and challenges. As we can see, we have so many concerns in our society today. But the Lord is sovereign and He is always in control. He can turn our mourning into dancing and our sorrows into joy. So come on, let us all together declare God's sovereign power over everything. Come on, church.
We magnify your name in this place. Lord, maraming salamat for who you are and for what you have done in us. Lord, it is our desire to make you smile, to give you all the glory, all the honor and praises. We magnify your name, God. In Jesus' name we pray. You know we never used flattery, nor did we put on a mask to cover up greed. God is our witness. We were not looking for praise from men, not from you or anyone else. As apostles of Christ, we could have been a burden to you, but we were gentle among you, like a mother caring for her little children. We loved you so much that we were delighted to share with you not only the gospel of God, but our lives as well, because you had become so dear to us. Surely you remember, brothers, our toil and hardship. We worked night and day in order not to be a burden to anyone while we preached the gospel of God to you. You are witnesses, and so is God, of how holy, righteous, and blameless we were among you who believed. For you know that we dealt with each of you as a father deals with his own children, encouraging, comforting, and urging you to live lives worthy of God, who calls you into his kingdom and glory. And we also thank God continually because when you received the word of God which you heard from us, you accepted it not as the word of men, but as it actually is the word of God, which is at work in you who believe. Brothers and sisters in Christ. Kung umaga po ninyo ito papanoorin, good morning. Kung hapon po eh, good afternoon naman. At kung gabi, good evening. Now when I was preparing the message, um, iniisip ko na Father's Day ngayon. Buti na lang may nag-remind sa akin na hindi pa ngayon Father's Day. Uh, next week pa. Kaya magigreet sana ako ng Happy Father's Day sa inyo ngayon. Kaya ano na lang, advance Happy Father's Day. Now, speaking of fathers, Paul is a spiritual father to a lot of churches in his day. We as Christians should aspire to be like Paul in how he deals with people if we want to make a difference in this world. Sa ating passage today, yung first section ng chapter 2 ng 1 Thessalonians, it records Paul's comments about his visit to Thessalonica. His words suggest that people outside the church were uh, charging him with unworthy motives and improper conduct. But the people inside the church knew exactly who Paul was. And in this letter, we are reminded by Paul's attitude, his characteristic as a follower of Christ, and as a spiritual father to the Thessalonians. Now, ang title po natin ngayong umaga ay, uh, Followers Who Make a difference. Paul made a huge impact on the churches he led. And he also made a difference for the people he mentored. If we want to be like Paul, who makes a difference, now ito ang first point natin, kung gusto natin matulad o maging katulad ni Paul. The first point is, we should be gentle. Verse 7 says, Instead, we were like young children among you. Just as a nursing mother cares for her children. Gusto kong tingnan natin ito sa um, NASB version. It says, But we prove to be gentle among you as a nursing mother tenderly cares for her children. Now, kanina pinag-uusapan natin uh, muntik na maging Father's Day ngayon. Pero bakit ang pinag-uusapan dito ay about mothers? Mother's Day ba ito? Now, keep in mind, um, ang nagsulat nito ay si Apostle Paul. And si Apostle Paul ay pwede nating masabi na isang man na lalaking lalaki. Now, it was Apostle Paul who got his start going from town to town hunting down Christians so who, he could put them to death. Isipin mo yung trabaho ni, ni Paul bago siya maging Apostle ni Christ. He was hunting people to put them to death. Now, once he became a Christian, 
He endured about every kind of hardship you can endure for the sake of the gospel. Napakadami niyang in-endure na hardships, na sufferings for the sake of the gospel. And this is the Paul who confronted Peter to his face over his hypocrisy. Ito, ito, ito si Paul na um, kinonfront na si Peter mismo na isang church leader dahil nakita niya na hypocrite si Peter. Paul took absolutely nothing from nobody. But here, Paul is talking about gentleness. Now, ang gentleness is not often a, a respected quality sa isang tao. Much more kung, kung tatawagin mo na napaka-gentle naman yung lalaking yan. Parang pakit panginggan. Pag lalaki gusto niyo marinig na power and assertive, yun yung nakakagain ng more respect in our society. But gentleness is um, love in action. Being considerate, uh, meeting the needs of others, allowing time for the other person to talk, and being willing to listen and to learn. It is an essential trait for both men and women. We all need to maintain a gentle attitude in our relationship with others. Now, in reminding the Thessalonians of his conduct, si Paul, he says, um, gentleness does not involve deception. It does not evolve, involve uh, people pleasing. It does not evolve, involve flattery and greed. Sabi niya sa chapter 2, verses 5 to 6. It is a catalog of what ministers should avoid. Dapat maging gentle tayo instead of being uh, deceptive, instead of being uh, people pleasers, instead of being flatterers, and instead of being greedy. Now, Paul speaks of being among you. Sabi ni Paul. Ibang version sinasabi na, in the midst of you. He then compares this behavior to that of a mother. Sa ibang translation is, ang pinaka term na ginamit is nurse. Para, parang ikaw ay isang nurse. A nurse among children. Now, a nurse or a mother is, is ay parang isang position that could be relied upon to give the children the most tender care. Paul claims to have given care like this to the Thessalonians. Para siyang nanay sa mga taga-Thessalonians. So far from trying to make gain of them, he had become one of them. He had lavished affectionate care on them. Paul understood that for people to respond to the gospel, there were times when he had to be tough. Alam naman natin, kilala naman natin si Paul. Um, ayaw niya yung mga um, sin na nangyayari sa mga churches and he always point them out. Sinasabihan niya kung anong dapat ang gawin. But there were also times to be tender. Think about what a nursing mother does for the sake of her children. She gives of herself so her children can be nourished. She responds to their needs no matter what time of day or night. She makes herself vulnerable in order to feed them. And men, let us not lose sight of the fact that Paul is isang lalaking lalaki. He is a tough guy. And Paul is the one saying this. For us Christians today, are we gentle? Are we gentle in our dealings with other people? Are we uh, meeting their needs? Are we being considerate? Now Paul being a, being a spiritual father to the Thessalonians, he was gentle to his spiritual children. So are we affectionate to our spiritual children? Sa mga sinishera natin, sa mga dinidisciple natin, are we tender with them? Are we gentle with them? Or when they make a mistake, galit ka agad tayo. We rebuke them ka agad. Or dahan-dahan natin silang tinuturuan ng maayos. Do you allow them to see your tender heart? Paul was among the, the Thessalonians to give something to them and not to take something from them. He did not, he did not come making demands as an apostle Paul was like a nursing mother who only looks to give to her child. Now, the second point is, followers who make a difference should, number two, be a good 
example. Verse 9 and 10 says, Surely, you remember, brothers and sisters, our toil and hardship. We work night and day in order not to be a burden to anyone while we preach the gospel of God to you. Ang unang point ni, uh, ni, ni Paul when he was talking about being an, a good example is that he was hardworking. This reminder that Paul and his companions has, has not been a burden on the Thessalonians. Now, yun ang sinasabi niya sa mga Thessalonians. Hindi kami burden because we are hardworking and we toil day and night. Alam nila ang sacrifice for, of being a preacher. The expression night and day indicates the long hours it cost, it cost them to maintain their independence while still discharging their God-given commission. Alam natin ang work ni Paul. It was, uh, it was said that he was a tent maker. Kaya napakadami siguro niyang time na um, nag-work with leather kasi yun ang usual na um, material when, when you use uh, sa mga tents, na pagawa ng mga tents. We have, all, we have all heard the expression, man's work is from sun to sun. But a, wa, but a woman's work is never done. Yun yung sinasabi ni Paul kanina eh, para siyang nurse eh, para siyang nanay. Paul is saying that he wasn't a paid nurse who worked by the hour. He isn't a babysitter. The point he is trying to get across is this. He loved these people. He loved them so much. He labored over them night and day because he loved them. Paul recognized his right to be supported by those ministered to. Si Paul alam niya na sa totoo lang, siya mismo nagsulat sa 1 Corinthians 9.14 na yung preacher dapat uh, mabigyan siya because he is uh, preaching. Dapat nandun din galing ang kanya mga needs. But voluntarily, he gave up that right to set himself apart from missionaries of false religions. Paul den denied his rights and took a higher standard upon himself. Then verse 10 gives us three more characteristics. Ano ba ang pagiging good example ni Paul? Verse 10 says, You are witnesses, and so is God of how holy, righteous, and blameless we were among you who, who believed. Now, it is impressive that Paul could freely appeal to his own life as an example. Si Paul, hindi niya kailangan sabihin na, wag niyong tingnan ang buhay ko. Tingnan niyo lang si Jesus. Now, si Paul, hindi ganun eh. Paul wanted people to look to Jesus, but he also could tell them to look at his life. Tingnan nyo si Jesus. Ganito ang ginagawa ni Jesus. Pero pwede nyo rin tingnan ang buhay ko. Because the power of Christ was real in his life. Alam niyang he was a good example. Tingnan natin yung mga characteristics ni Paul na sinabi niya dito sa verse 10. He said he was holy. He was set apart for service. He was set apart for a purpose. And alam ni Paul kung ano yun. And that is to preach the word of God. He was also righteous. Right standing before God. Hindi ito uh, self-righteous. A man's righteousness doesn't come from himself. It comes from God. Are you doing good only when others see you? Or kahit wala nakakita, you are also doing good. He is also blameless. He has the right rep reputation before others. And it talks about or it deals with honesty, fairness, integrity. Kung tatanungin ng boss mo, uh, what does he think of you? Kung tatanungin ng iyong co-worker, anong masasabi niya about you? If you are a student, anong masasabi ng iyong classmate sa'yo? Anong masasabi ng teacher mo sa'yo? Ikaw ba ay mabuting estudyante? Ikaw ba ay mabuting katrabaho? People will say ugly things about you, but the, more, the most important thing is to make sure that those criticisms are not true. Paul and his companions maintained a holy life. A holy life counts. 
It has nothing to do with obtaining your salvation, but it has everything to do with the salvation of folks around you, of people around you, because they are always watching you. This is a worthy goal for any Christian today, to live a life that declares how devoutly and justly and blamelessly we behave ourselves among others. This is the kind of life that draws others to follow Jesus for themselves. Ask yourselves, are we good examples to our neighbors? Are we good examples to our co-workers? Are we good examples to our employees, to our boss, to our classmates, to our FB, Facebook friends? Good example ka ba? The third point is, followers who make a difference should, should be caring. As a spiritual father, the Apostle Paul gave great guidance to these Christians in Thessalonica. And Paul summed up this guidance in verses 11 and 12. There, the Apostle Paul said, let us read verse 11 and 12. Verse 11 says, For you know that we dealt with each of you as a father deals with his own children, encouraging, comforting, and urging you to live lives worthy of God who calls you in this, into his kingdom and glory. Now he isn't talking about being a father here. Paul switches from comparing himself to a nursing mother to a loving father. Now the first phrase na ginamit niya dito is that ang magandang tingnan natin or focus na natin phrase dito is he's talking about each one of you. Because here Paul is, isn't talking to a group of people. Hindi, hindi ito ginader niya to talk uh, yung example niya dito is that he is not talking to uh, many people at once. He is talking to individuals. He says, we, should, we encourage each one of you and we comfort each one of you and we urge each one of you. Gusto kong tingnan ng version ng NASB. Sabi dito sa verse 11 and 12 sa NASB. Just as you know how we were exhorting and encouraging and imploring each one of you as a father with his own children, so that you would walk in a mother worthy of the God who calls you into his own kingdom and glory. Tingnan natin yung tatlong bagay na sinasabi ni Paul dito. First is exhorting. Sa Greek, uh, parakeleo. And kaleo is a verb meaning to call. So, parakaleo is one called alongside. It involves instruction and insight to teach. So, in, in this, sinasabi ni Paul na he is teaching each one of you. The second words, word na ginamit niya is encouraging. Sa Greek is paramutheumai. It involves uh, sympathy and concern. And the third word is imploring or marturumai. It's Greek. And it appeals to character and witness. It is when you remind your children that who they are and whose they are should make a difference in how they behave. Example lang nito is um, when, a pre, when a parent tells the children na um, hindi yan ginagawa ng mga del pilar. Ang mga del pilar, ganito ang ginagawa. Ganun yun, pag nire-remind natin kung sino sila. Mga del pilar, ganito ang ginagawa. Kaya pag sa mga lalaki naman, Pag lalaki, dapat hindi yan ginagawa. Ang mga boys, hindi yan ginagawa. Ganun. Now, there are going to be times when you instruct your friends. There are going to be other times when you comfort and listen to them. Or you come alongside their stories. And there will be times when you need to have to remind yung mga believers that they are followers of Christ. What I love about Paul here is that he is modeling what it, take, what it means to respond to each person in your life differently. Paul mentored several different people in his life. Iba-iba ang trato niya sa kada tao. Depende rin siguro sa ugali ng tao na yun. Example na lang is that he poured into a young pastor named Timothy and encouraged him to not let anyone look down on him because he was young. He also mentored Titus teaching him and giving him instructions. 
And I, I imagine na there must have been a time when Paul confronted the young John Mark to remind him of who he was as a believer and missionary. John Mark was the one who abandoned Paul and Barnabas on their first missionary journey. But later, Paul recognized John Mark for being, for being valuable to him in ministry. Paul himself lived justly and blamelessly. But he has also told the Thessalonians they should live the same way. Now, see Paul, he could say that to them, to live a life and walk in a manner worthy of God because his life and message were consistent. Sa atin, do you teach and instruct the people around you? O pag may hindi sila alam, sinasabihin mo kagad na, bakit di mo yan alam? Dapat alam mo na yan. O galit ka agad tayo. Do you encourage others? Do we lift up, lift up people? O tayo ang nagiging discouragement sa kanila? Do, do we remind other Christians of who, who we are in Christ? When we talk to other Christians, nire-remind ba natin sila na, Uy, Kristiyano ka. Ang mga Kristiyano, ganito dapat ang ginagawa. And as I end, let us look at verses 8 and 9. It says, So we cared for you because we loved you so much. We were delighted to share with you not only the gospel of God, but our lives as well. Surely remember, brothers and sisters, our toil and hardship. We work night and day in order not to be a burden to anyone while we preach the gospel of God to you. My friends, everything Paul did, he did for the sake of the gospel. Why was he tough and tender? Why was he gentle with his spiritual children? Verse 8 says, it was so he could share with them the gospel of God. Why did he work night and day? Bakit siya nagpakahirap? So that he could proclaim to them the gospel of God. My friends, tayo pong mga Kristiyano, tayo mga tagasunod ng Diyos, our number one job is to share the gospel of God. Sa ating mga parents dito ngayon, sa mga nanay, lalo lalo na sa mga tatay, our number one job is to share the gospel to our children. Winning is when we look at our friends, when we look at our family, and say, you receive the word of God which you heard from me, which you saw live out in me. You watched me love the church, and it made you love the church. You saw me live in right standing with God and in right reputation before men. And as a result, you accepted the gospel not as the word of men, but, at, but as what it really is, the word of God. So are you a winner? Did you make a difference? To make a difference, let us be gentle to those around us. Let us be a good example to our friends, to our family, to our co-workers, to our classmates. Let us be a caring person. Teach and encourage others. And lastly, to make a difference, let us focus our energies in sharing the gospel. Sa lahat sa inyo dito ngayon, I hope we can look back and say, meron akong tatay who made a difference. Siguro kung, kung Father's Day ito ngayon, saktong-sakto to. Now, but even if you cannot say that, you can still have a Father in Heaven who loves you more than we can measure. Trust in Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior. And God will be your heavenly Father. Yun po, mga kapatid. Good day and God bless. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, thank you for this day. Thank you for bringing us together in worship. Give us a heart, a heart like Paul zealous in his quest to share the gospel we pray for each one today we ask for your blessings we ask for your protection from any harm now to him who is able to keep you from stumbling 
and to present you before his glorious presence without fault and with great joy. To the only God, our Savior, be glory, majesty, power, and authority through Jesus Christ, our Lord, before all ages, now and forevermore. Amen. <laughs>